Hello and welcome to Pod Rocket. Today I'm here with Monica Sarbu, who's the founder and CEO of Zata. Is that how you pronounce it? Zata, X A T A, is, is how it's spelled. Uh, the idea is uh, to be like uh, extended data. Uh, so it's like data, but uh, uh, there are two pronunciations uh, Zata or Xata. Xata or Xata. <laughs> Got it. I like that. Um, well, very excited to have you on and, and learn about Exeta. Um, could you give us a quick overview of, of what you're building? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so the idea is that of Exeta is that we are building a serverless de- a serverless de- database that aims to radically simplify the way developers work with data. So the idea basically came if you think like if you are in working an organization and you want to start a new project. The idea is that first you need to kind of look for uh, a way to store your data and then you have to have all these discussions. What kind of database should I use? Should I use NoSQL, MySQL, what kind of uh, SQL I need to use and if SQL. Um, And then the idea is that as your project evolves and you also want to have uh, search functionality into it. And more often you use something like Elasticsearch and for that you have to synchronize your data from your database to Elasticsearch and you need something like Kafka uh, to be able to do that. And then as your project grows, then you also have to add another caching layer, something like Redis. So as you can see, the whole data infrastructure becomes quite quite complex. And this is something that I realized that many companies are struggling with. So my idea is like why every company out there needs to re-implement the wheel instead of uh, having all this functionality against a single API. Uh, One API that you can use to insert the data into the database, query the data, and search for the data that you are looking for. Um, And this is basically uh, how uh, I started the idea idea of SATA. Got it. And... Under the hood, are you using a Postgres or or Mongo or like what type of database or or did you build something from scratch, you know, under the hood in terms of the core database layer? Yeah. So our idea was to, uh, to not start a database from scratch because, you know, a database is not something that you can build overnight. It's something that takes a lot of resources and effort from your side. So our idea was to build a solution based on other existing solutions. So we are using uh, Aurora more precisely. So we're using Postgres SQL uh, and also Elasticsearch and a bit uh, of other other services out there in order to build all this functionality uh, out there. Got it. So you're building on kind of a, a stack of proven technologies, Aurora, Elastic. Um, curious what you, you mentioned caching as one of the, um, one of the, Maybe problems you're trying to solve that every normal normal people have to kind of deal with on their own. Do you use a, a, a caching layer as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the, currently, we don't have, but we are planning to add something like this to have the whole picture. Um, Got it. So Aurora for database, Elastic, and then eventually a caching layer. And like, what does a developer get if they use Exata? you know, instead of just if they kind of manually implemented all of those tools on their own, like where's the, what is the kind of the value add of your product? Yeah. So one of the things that I've I've seen is that companies and startups, for example, are, are spending more than 50% of their resources building on data infrastructure instead of, you know, them concentrating their resources on building the functionality, the business logic of their product, right? So that's why we we want to uh, make the teams and companies more efficient uh, and provide all this functionality against a single API. Also, another thing that I realized in my career is that, you know, imagine the, the big technical companies out there like Elastic and so on, uh, Google and so on, they, for them it's very Easy. It's very easy for them to attract good technical people in order to be able to build such a data infrastructure because this requires uh, a really complicated, complex knowledge of all the services. Um, but for other companies that maybe uh, it's harder for them to attract good technical people, especially companies that are not so 
technical oriented. They are not building technical products. For them, it's very difficult to attract good technical people. So the way it's happening is that they are going to outsource uh, building the data infrastructure to another company. And as you can imagine, the result out of this is not a good, good one. So one of the things that I realized is that more, like there are lots of companies out there. They are building their uh, data infrastructure or the way they store the data with Airtable. So they're using as a as a data store. And I've seen so far discussing with lots of companies that uh, people are very innovative in how to overcome the limitation of their table. You know, they have hundreds of their tables, they synchronize it between them and so on. They build a lot of custom logic on top that at some point becomes this monolithic application. So that's the idea is that companies decide to, to go with Airtable um, because it's just the easier solution to get started with the idea that once they find the product market fit, they're going to replace it with something more robust, you know, something like Postgres SQL. And you can imagine as a company, how does it feel to move from something that is so easy to use as Airtable to something that is so complicated to use at Postgres SQL. And for me, the, I mean, I realized this only when I started Tupo. So I started Tupo, this nonprofit organization that offers free mentorship for underrepresented groups in tech. And we are building um, a platform, a mentorship platform. And we, we realized there isn't really a, a database solution out there that is, is as easy as should be and you know you have to spend a lot of time trying to understand how a database works you need to you know read documentation and try to understand how you can fit your database into your application so that's a lot of work and in the end we decided to go with Airtable because um, Airtable was very easy to build a solution in just a few weeks um, and also we use their table as a CRM type of tool in order to, to do the matching uh, between the mentors and mentees because we, uh, we are still doing this manually. And this was kind of the moment when I was on the other side of the table, kind of realizing there is a huge need on the market to have a database, a serverless database that is very easy to use. Um, that offers a developer experience and, and basically changes and provides all the functionality that you as a company need. Uh, so you don't have to provide and implement or spend a lot of resources uh, concentrating on building this complicated data infrastructure that kind of every company out there is using the same tools and has the same architecture over and over again. Yeah, I mean, makes a lot of sense. And I've I've also spoken to numerous startups where they build their prototype on Airtable and it's great because it's fast, it's easy to get started. They have the really nice uh, kind of GUI on top of the database, essentially, which is, I mean, for, for Airtable, it feels like their product is primarily a GUI with kind of a database under the hood, but that's where a lot of the magic is and being able to quickly tweak your schema or create fields or edit data just in a nice visual interface and then you can build your product on top of their APIs and I hear about that a lot but to your point it, you know that never scales beyond some certain capacity because it's not a true database that's meant to power an application or at least that's my understanding so this makes a lot of sense and are you building like a full visual editor on top of the Aurora database like something that's similar to Airtable and um, if so, maybe curious to understand how it's similar or different than what folks are used to in Airtable today. Yeah, so I think in my opinion, Airtable is a uh, uh, door opening for a new era where users see how many complicated things they can do with such a great user experience, with such a simple UI. And you don't have to be even a developer to be able to, you know, uh, have group and, and manage uh, a certain uh, type of data um, yourself. So the idea is that what we are trying to build is that we get the usability of our table and you, we put it on a traditional, on top of a traditional database uh, without, um, you know, removing the, the key features of a database like uh, data integrity and scalability. Um, and so, yeah, as you said, we, we are building 
uh, a similar, you know, view as Airtable has with a spreadsheet like UI, you know, because this is a, a really easy way for you to see data, uh, but also to build your schema file and update your schema, uh, your schema, um, not file, or uh, your schema. Um, and uh, yeah, and the idea that we have is that we put a lot of effort in trying to kind of think of like what is the best and easier uh, workflow for our users to become successful and, and start and uh, run a database even in production with just a few steps. Uh, so because we kind of, you know, we want to change the, the way uh, develop or developers interact with database currently. One of the things that um, I remember, I used Airtable for a project a few years ago, so it's possible they've solved this problem, but like if you're trying to change a large amount of data or change the format of a whole column, no, there's, there wasn't a ton of uh, tooling or much of a story around like a migration. So is that something that you automate where if you, in your visual editor, want to change uh, um, you know, the, the schema or format of a column, can you do those migrations automatically on top of the, the Postgres database? Yeah, I mean, you have to understand that Airtable was built with a different use case in mind, with a different persona in mind, right? So we, our focus is we are concentrating on building a solution for developers. And that's why we introduced branching, uh, which I find a very interesting, a very interesting concept in the way, imagine that uh, you want to build a new feature and for that you have to create a pull request. Uh, in GitHub, and I think it would be nice to be able to have, let's say, a button or, or a link in GitHub that says there's this new feature against the new schema and against real data from the database, and, and this goes well, then deploy it in production. Um, I think, in my opinion, uh, branching is uh, the branching is, is like a, a feature that is specific for developers. Um, and the idea is that, you know, you have your brand, you create a new branch, then you create the migrations, and then you create a migration request uh, to deploy all these uh, migrations into production um, without uh, a downtime. Um, so the idea of, you know, having a zero downtime migrations is something that uh, is very powerful, and this is the hardest thing that, uh, we are we are building for a, for a type of database that it's a schema schema full label database. Um, so we are building a solution, a database solution, if you want, on top of other database solutions. But we are building a lot of functionality on top of it in order to make this experience as easy as possible. So even though you are not a developer and needs to understand how a database works in order to be able to run uh, one in production. I'm curious, um, you, you mentioned on, on the website, I was just looking at it, like, and we talked about this before, one of the benefits is that it's as a, as a serverless database, so to speak, folks don't need to worry about scaling of the database and nodes and um, all, of, all of kind of those concepts. But at the same time, you know, depending on what an application looks like, it can be helpful to have some control over how costs scale or um, how performance scales as, as a developer when you're building an application. So how do you think about that trade-off of giving developers control of the underlying infrastructure such that they can kind of tweak things as necessary, but, but also making it as easy to use as possible and accomplishing your goal of just making something that's extremely easy for developers who don't want to need to deal with Elastic and Aurora and all the underlying tools? Yes, that's a very good question. And I think the, I mean, this is something that I was, uh, you know, we, this is, I mean, in my entire career, I was building uh, tools for developers and you always have this. You, I think it, the, the perfect answer on this is that you have to find the balance in order to, you know, make it um, build a, a solution that is as easy to use, 
as possible, but also that allows you to have to be customizable um, in order for for bigger organization or larger organization to be able to kind of fit in in their in their infrastructure. So I think there there is always a balance in this. So uh, that's um, uh, yeah, that's that'll be the answer. <laughs> So there's been a ton of innovation in this general space. I mean, all, all the serverless platforms and um, and then kind of on the storage and database and tooling for serverless side. Um, we've also, uh, we've spoken with Supabase and we've had a few, a few um, folks on the show building platforms for developers of serverless. So curious how you think about the competitive landscape and how Exata compares to maybe something like Subabase, since that's uh, maybe something our audience is quite familiar with. Yes, that's a good question. So the idea that we have is that we we want to build more than a database because we are providing more functionality. Um, so that's why uh, we are. There is really a, a direct competitor out there on the market that is building something similar as we do. Of course, like if you think about the database, because in the way you, you people are gonna associate you as a database. Uh, there is like lots of competitors on the market, right? And and now, like you, like you mentioned, there is a, a superbase also uh, that is building a serverless database. The difference between uh, superbase and all the others is that so they are usually um, their their idea is to get a, a MySQL or PostgreSQL and, and, and uh, um, offering as a service. Uh, and basically they are um, allowing uh, direct access uh, to PostgreSQL or SQL um, to the users. Uh, our approach is a bit different. So we want to think about like what will be the ideal user experience uh, that the developers can have and then uh, think about backwards. And, and that's why our solution is that it's built on top of other existing technologies, but if the users will interact with the API. Um, and this allows us to build you know, features that the others are not able to build because they are limited to the uh, Postgres SQL or the other SQL um, APIs that they have. So that's why we can have we can discuss about zero time migrations and things like this. In the last years, there are a lot of uh, innovation uh, in the in the um, in the UI world, if you want. So now it's very easy to deploy web applications with platforms like Netlify and Vercel. That makes it so easy. We just uh, by pushing your code uh, in, in we get. Um, and I think what's missing is is the data part. Uh, because currently it's so complicated to to use uh, and integrate databases, and I think if we if we have this part and uh, we allow, uh, will give superpowers to UI developers to build to be able to build applications, end to end applications, dynamic applications that they were not able to build before. So I think this is um, one of the the target audience that we want to start with uh, because I think this is uh, this is where we think we can uh, we can be more um, we can bring a, um, a difference or something innovative into the space I'm curious to learn a bit more about your API so from what you were saying before it sounds like developers aren't interacting directly with um, the Postgres API. So what does it look like to use the Exata API? And um... Yeah, so it's very similar if you are familiar with Elasticsearch API because a few people from, uh, from SATA came from Elastic, including myself. So we got inspired quite a lot uh, from Elasticsearch, uh, but we, based on our ex experience, we, of course, we made the V2 version of Elasticsearch uh, API. So it's very easy to use. Um, and we also, in addition to the API, we also have, you know, uh, we have two ways basically for you to interact with your product, with the service, either through the command line interface or through the UI uh, that we discussed a bit earlier. And if someone wants to use an ORM like Prisma, are they still able to do that um, with Fixata? 
Um, yeah, that's a very good question. The idea is that you you don't need to use uh, a, a URM on top of it, right? So maybe we can think of like having uh, an integration for, uh, you know, because Prisma, for example, is building uh, integrations with a few other database uh, into the space so we can have an integration with them. But imagine that, for example, it's a comparison with having Planet Scale and Prisma together. This is what we are building. And on top of that, we also have our our SDK because you know all the others, you know, because they are exposing either a PostgreSQL or MySQL, depending on the company, they can have they can use all the ecosystem uh, that is available out there. But we build our own um, SDK in order. And basically, as you can see, we are building all these pieces with the idea to build end-to-end user experience uh, better for the developers. You mentioned before um, one of the advantages of using the Exata API is you're able to support zero-time migrations. Um, could you explain a bit more uh, what that means? Yeah, so basically what this means is that you can basically imagine that you are building a new feature uh, and then you can deploy it in production without having a, um, a down uh, your system down for the time of the migration. Got it. And I guess are there any would there be any concerns with something like that that a developer could accidentally uh, make a mistake and delete data or have a migration if the migration is happening automatically under the hood, like are there concerns a developer would have to be aware of? Like, I feel like when whenever tools abstract some of these core underlying concepts like migrations or transactions, on the one hand, you gain ease of use and speed of development. On the other hand, maybe there's some additional risks that things could go wrong if the developer isn't like explicitly telling the database how to change the data and what to do. So am I thinking about that right, that there maybe are some uh, you know, some trade-offs there and any ways that you're addressing that problem? I think that's a, basically the main, the one of the main benefits of, you know, of exposing an API because you can restrict um, the, um, what the user can do. So basically it is like if you, if you expose directly the PostgreSQL, for example, you cannot really restrict any functionality, but because we have our own API, we can we can allow this, and uh, for example, we can have for example um, other other uh, engineers from the company can review um, the the code before deploying the production or things like this in order to make sure that uh, this is um, this is safe. But this is idea of branching, right? Because when you create a new code, for example, and then you, the idea is that you you can test it uh, against the, the new schema and against real data from the database. So there are lower chances for you to kind of make any mistakes when you when you deploy it in production. Currently, this is this is um, unfortunately it's kind of a manual work for the developers because usually you know they sometimes test a new feature against. Uh, the real production uh, database out there, or if they have a, um, you know, another um, development, uh, a copy of, 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 you know, the production uh, database internally, but it's kind of a manual process. And we want to make this as easy as, you know, merging your pull request in GIF, uh, everything through a UI, uh, everything just, uh, you know, very easy and um, yeah. Uh, just reducing uh, a lot of manual work, so you as a developer can concentrate on building, you know, the important features uh, that you should be concentrate building on, and not necessarily in like how you test things and things like this. So I'm I'm curious to learn a bit more about the future roadmap. Um, we spoke earlier about how uh, caching is coming up soon, but. Curious, both short term, like next six to twelve months, what's on the roadmap, and then afterwards we can kind of talk about, you know, five year vision. What are you most excited about? But maybe we start first short term. 
Yeah, so currently we are, we didn't discuss about this, but currently we are uh, in closed beta. So we, two weeks, uh, two months ago, we started to onboard our four users and the plan is to have a public launch uh, by the end of the summer. Uh, and basically um, will kind of contain all the um, functionality or, or that we already discussed about. Um, and long-term plans, uh, let's say the, the first phase for us is to concentrate on uh, web developers. And that's why, we, like I said, we are very excited about these integrations with Netlify, Vercel, and also we are discussing uh, integration with Cloudflare workers. I think there are so many integrations that we can do um, that allow users to build even you know, applications end-to-end. Um, so the second phase uh, that uh, we want to concentrate on, then you know, backend engineers um, uh, would be basically uh, one of our target audience as well, um, and kind of long term, but not necessarily long term, uh, will be um, that will also extend to uh, non-technical people. The way I'm thinking, uh, thinking is that imagine that you have a company and the developers from that company are develop, are building their web application on top of SATA. And then you have, imagine that you have this database that stores all these data that are collecting from the users. And then you have all the other departments inside the same company, non-technical people, like for example, marketing and so on. They would like to build a CRM type of tools on the data that you are collecting in the database. Um, so the idea is that, you know, to use the same service, um, but for different personas. Uh, of course, different functionality, um, but the idea that uh, we want to, um, uh, to achieve here is that we have a single service that you can use by different personas. And this is very useful in the case, imagine that you are working in support, for example, and you want to have a specific view of the data to be able, for example, to to be allowed to change only a column, for example, uh, the address of the user or, for example, a coupon or things like this. And that will allow you to directly uh, change it into the database. And then how about longer term? You know, where do you see this going in five or 10 years? What's the, the vision? Yeah, so the kind of the longer term, term, uh, term vision is that I think we are in a very lucky situation in the sense that we own the data, so we can build a lot of functionality on top of it. So the way we are thinking of is that in the future to allow users to build end-to-end -end web applications, um, not only the database part, but also um, uh, the whole picture. I think what's, uh, what we think is, uh, is kind of uh, lacking at the moment is that you know, it's very hard for you to copy a feature from one web application to another. And the way to do this is that you have to copy the, web, the whole web application. So I think it will be uh, cool to have like a, a platform that uh, basically will allow you to build this new web application with just selecting the common functionality that all the web applications have, for example, billing, authentication, and all of this, like it's common in all these web applications. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you are building a web application. So definitely there are other companies out there that are doing something like this. So initially probably it will make sense to integrate with, with, with those companies. But I think the, the, the power will be to kind of provide an uh, end-to-end user experience for building uh, an entire application. Um, my, you know, I think my theory is that uh, I think it be, you know, it's already so difficult to find good technical people, um, and I think we need to. We are at a stage, let's say, um, where we need to simplify the way. Um, uh, you know, developers build new applications on top. And I think you don't have to be even a developer to be able to build uh, an application yourself. Imagine that you are starting a, a new company and you are not a developer. I think, you know, there is so um, there are so many companies out there that, you know, the no-code, low-code type of um, uh, market 
Uh, and I think this is, um, this is, in my opinion, this is a trend. So uh, you, it allows you in the end to build uh, a whole company with just a few resources and will give you more, um, more uh, time to also concentrate on what is important for your organization. And I've learned this in my career, no matter how big is your organization, you'll always struggle on the number of resources you have. <laughs> so there is always there's always like this. So I think it will be uh, good for, you know, to, uh, to use, let's say, uh, a uh, data infrastructure out there uh, or uh, have used different services or uh, this service for authentication this is for uh, for storing the data this service for for something else that allows you to build you know end to end uh, application with just few resources and in a shorter period of time well monica thank you so much for joining us today it's been great learning about exada and um We'll post some links in the episode description. Um, the The website's just xata.io, xata.io. Um, yes. Any other resources you would recommend for someone who wants to learn and get started, or should they just go to the website? Yeah, I think uh, go to the website and also um, uh, go to our documentation uh, if they are curious about. I think I would suggest to subscribe. Uh, on the waiting list. And if you have a, a use case, an urgent uh, use case, just reply to the email that you receive from us and we're going to allow you uh, to the um, to the closed beta version. We love to hear your feedback. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Monica, and take care. Thank you. Bye.